And now for something completely different. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to... Sup, y'all, and welcome to Population Immigration Unit 2, Part 8. In today's video, we're going to look at this key question, where and how do people migrate? Now we can move on to looking at factors and barriers to migration. One of the causes can be the knowledge of opportunities in other places, which you get through information. Due to modern technology, this can be passed almost instantaneously. Now keep in mind, a cause or a factor of migration can be the same thing as a barrier to migration. You just have to look at it in the opposite way. Something else to consider are costs. We're talking about financial or locational or emotional costs. It's difficult to leave one's home to try a completely new way of life. Now what you see on this map are what European colonialism helped to establish, which are islands of development. Now, islands of development are often coastal cities because their establishment was based on access to trade. They are places within a region or country where most foreign investment goes, where the vast majority of paying jobs are located, and where infrastructure is concentrated. For example, within the region of West Africa, the oil-producing areas of Nigeria are islands of development. In the mid-1970s, poor people in places like Togo, Benin, and Ghana perceived that the economic life was better in coastal Nigeria, and they were lured to the coast for short-term jobs while the oil economy was good. Now, these migrants, usually young men, worked until the oil economy took a fall in the early 1980s, and at that point, the Nigerian government decided the foreign workers were no longer needed, and they forcibly pushed out 2 million foreign workers. Another factor or barrier to migration deals with politics or laws. So if you're dealing with conflict, such as a civil war, or a regime change, as in communism spreading to places like Cuba or Vietnam, or even immigration policies, can affect migration. For example, in 1947, British India was partitioned into India, where the Hindu majority was, and Pakistan, where the Muslim majority was. And you can see at that time that Pakistan was on the west and on the east. This resulted in the migration of 17 million people. As you can see with the image on the right, the train station in Amritsar, India, is crowded with Hindus from Pakistan. Yet another cause or barrier to migration is environmental. In 1995, a volcano made the southern half of the island Montserrat, including the capital city of Plymouth, uninhabitable. People who remained migrated to the north or to the United States. And in 2005, Hurricane Katrina swept through Louisiana. It was the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history, with the total property damage estimated at over $80 billion. And hundreds of thousands of Americans left the region. They were often referred to as evacuees instead of refugees because of the negative connotation of that word. And also there are personal characteristics, such as culture, your age, gender, education, and economic status. For example, well-educated, affluent, young males are the most mobile in the world, and poorly educated females, who are old and poor, are the least mobile. And of course, money is the most important factor affecting migration. Now, chain migration occurs when a migrant communicates with family or friends, or what we call kinship links, and creates a more positive perception of a location, and may even promise to help them with living accommodations or with obtaining a job. As you can see here, around 700,000 Jews migrated to what was then Palestine between 1900 and 1948. And since then, thousands and thousands more have also migrated there. And chains of migration built upon each other create immigration waves or swells of migration from one origin to the same destination, as is the case of thousands of Cubans who have migrated into Miami. Now the last section we're going to look at is dislocation or the geography of looking at refugees. International refugees have crossed one or more international borders to seek asylum, or the right to protection in the first country in which the refugee arrives. Now, there are many who are not recorded as refugees because they are internal refugees, or called internally displaced persons, or IDPs. Now, they have abandoned their homes, but remain in their own countries. The best data we have is from the UNHCR, or the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. According to them, in 1970, about 2.9 million refugees existed. In 1980, over 8 million existed. More recently, 
as many as 11 million or more are recognized as actual refugees. But if you take a look, approximately 26 million more are considered as internally displaced persons. Now, the UNHCR helps return refugees to their homelands, a process called repatriation. And refugees can often be identified by at least three characteristics, individual or aggregate. Most refugees move without any more tangible property than what they can carry or transport with them. Also, most refugees make their first step, quote-unquote, on foot, by bicycle, wagon, or open boat. In other words, the technology that facilitates modern migration is an operative. Keep in mind, if they can afford to travel by car or by plane, they would, just that most can't afford to do it. Also, refugees move without the official documents that accompany channeled migration. One example of a refugee crisis occurred after the United States had pulled out of Vietnam, where between 1 and 2 million people fled to avoid the repression of being under a communist regime. These were often referred to as boat people because so many cramped themselves into ships to find safer harbor. On the open seas, the boat people had to face deadly storms, disease and starvation, and elude pirates. According to the UNHCR, between 200,000 and 400,000 boat people died at sea. There are many other examples of refugees, historic and current, but it goes to prove that migration, whether through push or pull factors, is an inevitable reality of our modern world. Shogun of Harlem.